Hey, it's Matt with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Monday. It's November 30th. This will be our chart lesson for today, and in the end, this is a range day. I had this a little different earlier on, but as we made this newer low, if you drug it down, it's real clear. Here's your midline right across here, and you can see even early on, even before prices gave you the lower side, the midline still holding, and once you were able to drag it down here once you got this low you can clearly see when we came back it's acting as the middle line again if that's not clear enough to show you that there is something to uh, market geometry uh, I'm not sure what to tell you but because because early on this is what we would have looked at and it looks and you can see prices are working back and forth here but I believe what they're working off is that previous close and you'll see that quite a bit um, but there was no way to know why prices were bouncing right across here yet. But once we made this low, you drag prices down to that low, and lo and behold, you can see that midline all the way across there. That's market geometry at its best. And then when we came back to it, most of this was all after 2 o'clock, but you can still see prices working both sides of that midline. It's like clockwork. So... Uh, when somebody tells you that there's nothing that, you know, that the market's random and that there's, you know, the market moves randomly, don't believe it. I can show you over and over. Go back and watch it. I got thousands of videos on YouTube after all these years. and You can go back and see this stuff. I've been showing it to you for 15, 10 or 15 years now. It's all there. So uh, trust this stuff. When you see it and somebody tries to tell you it's not real, just let them believe that. But you can clearly see it's a range day. Uh, we did break out of the overnight lows. We fell down into here. Really what you had is you had two legs down, but we couldn't quite get that measured leg. There's your measured leg. You look for that. And we didn't quite make that. But um, that, was, that would have been my target that I was working for if you were able to ride any of this down. I really don't see any way that you can enter this this move here. There's just not a good setup. Right here is your best opportunity. But at that point, you were looking at this, and there's no way you can go short right into that. I mean, it's pretty obvious that's a two-tiered channel right there. And so I believe we just had an overshoot because if, if you drag this down, notice how your midline doesn't really fit. It kind of gives you some, looks like it probably does right there momentarily, but it just doesn't fit properly. Um, the only way I can make it fit is here. So I believe this just to be a large overshoot in the end. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Sometimes you don't know for sure. You can get close. But in the end, I believe this is just a large overshoot. If you just kind of drag it down to where you get the midlines right there, then maybe that's your two-tiered channel, and this small bit is an overshoot. That's probably more realistic, and that does tend to fit as well. But notice when we came back here, it doesn't account for that move, where here you at least have a midline. So it doesn't really matter how you looked at it. Uh, you still don't get a trade here, and you still get an overshoot, and you still get to the same place. So I hope that's clear. But... Um, Really, the way you're going to, have to trade this is trade these shorter term trends in here. And uh, we couldn't get this one till almost uh, maybe 10, just after 1030. But it really didn't help you anymore after that. You really had to trade the shorter term stuff because we never came back to this trend line. We never got to the highs either. So, uh, and how did I get the highs? I, I really found those up here. And you can clearly see that midline working. Both sides of prices. So I'm pretty confident this was correct. Um, but early on, you might have played it like this. Which I believe is how I was playing it. Yeah, about like that early on. And it still fits. But it fits much better when you take it all the way to these highs. Like so. And you could clearly see what prices were doing here. They were just playing that midline up and down all the way. And so either way, the 
the best shot at playing this was to play the uh, shorter term trends and channels uh, trends trend channels and ranges is what I'm trying to say couldn't get that one out but let's back out we'll go through the trades this is a really strong trend down here but again I just don't see let me tighten this just a little make it I still just don't see a good opportunity to enter it uh, maybe here but we've been so far away for so long it's just not worth it um, it's just not a good setup there you definitely don't want to enter here that's I mean that's a definite no-no right there entering into that low because most times it'll touch again and bounce and stop you out so I just don't think there it's a shame but unless you caught a runner up here you're probably gonna miss this Let's back out a little further. We'll go through the trades. There's not a lot of them today. This was not a real hard day. If you just followed the rules and were patient enough to ride some of these. I mean, it's hard to watch that keep going over and over and over without you. But that's what you have to do. And people say, well, how do you do that? You just have to have, you just, your mind has to be stronger than your desires to take a trade. If it doesn't fit the rules, you don't trade it. Simple as that, even if it goes without you. And that's the worst thing in the world you can do. Let me give you this advice, and then we're going to do the go over the trades. If you see a big move that goes without you, but you didn't get a setup, then don't sweat it. That's what will happen is you'll start, you'll see that, and you'll say, dang, if it comes back to that trend line again, I'm getting in. And guess what? It comes back right here and you somewhere, and you try to get in. And then it, the, the next thing you know, it never comes back. So... If you tried to get in and you couldn't get in and you missed a trade, then you did the right thing. And you just can't let that bother you. That's part of being a good trader is just, hey, the setups are here. I take them. If they're not here, even if prices are moving and moving strongly, if there's no setup, I don't enter. And if you can follow just that part of the rules, you change your trading almost immediately to the better. So I hope that's very clear. But anyway, let's talk about the trades. Uh, 7 o'clock came right in here, so uh, working down. We actually had a two-tier channel working up here. We had our break. We had a big move up, and then we had two legs back here. And you can see a leg working back, a break, a new low. Um, this also does a little bit of a congestion here, so this could be like a little failed break lower. But either way, there's also a new low here, and so that's a first entry, second entry, there's a second entry short that fails. There's a second entry long. There's a little fail out of congestion. There's two or three reasons to like going long right there. It's, it's a fairly bullish signal bar. By itself on a second entry after we've already had a break at a new high, I don't think I would take this trade. But the fact that it's a failed second entry short and a failed break lower and a double test of the EMA, uh, with all that going for it, I think it was because there's always a chance you get a second leg up, especially when you got one that strong. So notice you get the break and you get a two legged correction, then two legs up. And a lot of times that two legged correction can be the center of a move. So you might even get a measured move from here up. It's equal to from here to here. We didn't get that, but sometimes you do. And so I like going long right there. Just for just hoping we get a scalp out of it and maybe another leg. Either way, you get a, nice move here and you get a chance to get a, a nice runner that's a you know that's a five to eight point move that you could get easily right there you actually come back and get another second entry here but that's too congestive uh it's a very small bar it's very tempting but with it stacking up like that and already a break in two legs i would just sit tight and by sitting tight you see this failed second entry long i like going possibly going short i didn't mark it right there but technically um, if you had enough room to go short right here and get out before you hit the lows of this little congestive area, you could take that trade. It's real questionable. You could mark it green. I didn't mark it, but I like it for a failed second entry long in an aggressive mode. Uh, again, only if you got room to get out. The way you might do this is let it break lower. And then drop your lemon order in a couple of ticks higher if you didn't quite have enough room. And see if it back up. It may or may not. Some, most times it won't on a trap like that. And you can see how quickly that shot down. Because it's a trap. And all these longs are going to have to exit. Uh, again, I really like this trade. But I'm only willing to mark it green. Just because there's not a lot of room to scalp out. Out of that congestion. So, 
you get a lower high here, but I think that's you've already got your two legs down, so that's too dangerous. It does chop on down, then bounce. And then this is a second entry short. It's a little hard to see. Uh, notice that you you start working up and you get the first entry. And it breaks lower and then turns and goes higher. And then this breaks and goes higher and then turns back down. So that's the second time it comes down right there. It's a little more advanced. It's a little harder to see, but that's the second entry short. And this, I like trading on the engulfing bar. I don't know if I would, I don't like entering down here so much because that's, 19 ticks but if you enter back here you cut a lot of that off of it uh when it breaks higher and turns down just go short one tick below that and that turns out to be a quick easy scalp it does come back and run your stops but i like entering again here on a lower high but also that's a little congestion area right there again i didn't mark that but Let's put it on there so you can see it. That's a little failed break lower. And of course, there's a little failed break lower here too. But this thing's trending down and we're in this two-tiered channel. And we've, we just confirmed the trend line right there on that breakout. So that's why I like that one. But we get a lower high here on a breakout pullback short. Again, with the, may, the bigger trend. And it's a failed second entry long. Notice that new high, first entry, second entry. Nice signal bar too. And this actually breaks higher and turns down. So it's probably going to trap people again. Drops on down. Uh, this one's too congested. This is just too congestive across here. Um, I don't really like entering in here. And you're just kind of hovering over that midline. Prices are just kind of uncertain. But then all of a sudden the bottom drops out. And again, we talked about this earlier. This is a very strong trend. When you start to see all these little bars with lots of dojis and the corrections are very shallow. Just notice just one tick, maybe five or six ticks, one or two ticks. And you got lots of stems and doji. That's a strong trend. And that's a very strong move. But I still don't see anywhere to enter there that's safe. That's worth risking. So you just have to watch that go without you. Now, if you would entered here, you probably catch a runner on this one, maybe. Maybe not. It may have got you right here. It just depends um, how you entered that one. So if you just enter... And really, the only way you could enter that one's one tick below that. So you're probably not going to get a runner here. So um, you just have to watch this go without you. So then it bounces. And I like this one. It's a little aggressive, but I just like it for a higher low. Uh, notice, we, notice how easy we push right back through that EMA. And then we try to go down once and turn back up and then go down again and then turn up um and that's a nice bullish bar above the ema and you can easily look and see that's one leg you're probably going to get a measured leg right there you, you may even i mean we may even reverse because this is an overshoot no matter how you look at this it's an overshoot but there's your measured leg and you see we got that pretty much to the tick then it corrects one more time and pushes up here I didn't like going short here. I think this is a case where you got to wait on a lower high and you don't get that till here. So notice you get the break, you move to a new high and then you get a lower high. And that's a good sign that we're probably going lower now. It's also a first entry, second entry short. So that's the better place to enter. There's actually a failed second entry long right here. I didn't mark this one because it's three bars stacked up. Uh, that's not necessarily congestion. It's, there's just a little bit of up down there. There's no, there's a pretty big stem here, but there's not a bar with a very small body like this right here or like one of these. So technically that's not really congestion, but I, and if it breaks lower there, it may trap some people. It's similar to back up here, but um, I'm just not crazy about it. I think you're better off to skip it and you just don't get another real opportunity to enter that. And we're headed down again. And you would, normally you would expect prices to push for a new low here, but with this overshoot and this strong move up, we may just get a little correction and then try to make another lag up. So once we went higher from here, or actually, hang on, what you draw that, once we went higher from here, you'd look for a measured move. And you can see that's pretty much exactly what we got. And then we started going sideways. That would have been a perfect target if you caught this on the way back up. 
I don't really see a move here that I like. Uh, there's a failed second entry short in here, right here, but it's not one you can take. Notice you're moving up, you go first entry, then you're moving up and you go second entry, and it just ends up being a long trap. I don't like going short there either. It is an engulfing bar, so it's probably going to act like a trap. But it's just so close to that EMA, and it's really hard to know if we're going higher or if we're going to go lower again here. I think it's one you just have to kind of sit it out. And then we bounce, and you get a higher low here. But again, it's not a very good higher low. You actually get a failed second entry short right here. But again, we don't even come back to the EMA, and you've already got a break, so it could push up one tick and fail and turn down. So again, I just don't think you can enter right there. And then finally, we make a new high, and you just kind of start working sideways, and you get that failed breakout. And this is an engulfing bar. It breaks higher, turns down. If you've got enough room between the low of this green bar and the EMA, then go short right there on a the sell stop. Because that is a second entry short. Uh, Actually, technically, it's not. You could call it one because you got a little matching low right there. So that's you can consider that a correction. And so if you want to be a little more advanced, you could consider that a new low and that a first entry and then it went higher. It's, I really hate to even get into that because it just confuses people. But you could still trade this as a failed breakout of this little congestion area and ride it back to the EMA. And that's all you'd be looking for. It might go lower, but that's all you're expecting is a scalp. And then pretty quickly, it's real obvious that we're in a range here. Uh, we've turned down twice here, and now we're turning up twice here. I marked this one as a higher low and uh, a double test of this level right here. Uh, it's not a great signal bar either. It is a second entry long, too, which we don't really, once you're going sideways, you don't care that much about second entries. You're not looking for them, but if you get a entry that fits our regular range rules and it turns out to be a second entry then pay attention to that because you can clearly see there's two legs back of correction and then we go higher and there's two legs up that's basically a double bottom first entry second entry so there's one leg two legs and so i like going short there it's real close to being uh, a neutral bar but i think that's bearish enough i believe that closes i think it's i believe that closes in its bottom to third so I think you can go short right there, especially on a little trout failed breakout. And again, that's a second entry short with two legs up. And that turns out to be a pretty nice move. And then you get a failed breakout to the downside. Um, really, you're better off to wait on those higher lows here. But you've heard me say this millions of times probably by now. I probably exaggerate maybe hundreds of times, though. That these failed breakouts turn out to be important lows. And I like to be aggressive with them sometimes. So this is one of those where you might try to get long here on a failed breakout. Now, they'll fail sometimes, but they work. When you do catch one, they work so well that they're worth risking occasionally if, you, you know, if you're a good enough trader and you can take a little risk and afford a loss occasionally. So that's a great, turns out to be a good trade, and you could ride that all the way up into the close. Now, I probably would have exited right here. That's the way I would have played that because there's too big a chance it turns down and stops you out or even turns down again, although we did trade up into this. But that's the way I would play it, and I would look for another entry. Um, so my if I, if I did enter here, I'm going to try to keep a runner. This is one of the times on a tight range where I would keep a runner on a failed breakout, and I'm going to exit at the very high, just in front of that, to make sure in case it turns a little bit early and to make sure I get out easily. You know, I don't have to sweat it out for a few ticks and then watch it turn against me and miss it. It's not worth a few extra ticks. Give up those few extra ticks to get out early to be sure you get out quickly. And then we kind of work sideways again here, and then you get a failed break out the top. And again, it's that aggressive move. Uh, just go short right there, and get. And this is a good example. You get out a couple of ticks before these lows, because notice it didn't get, it missed it by a tick or so. So by getting out a couple of ticks early, you get out of that, and you don't have to worry about it going against you right there and giving it all back. So... This runs up, and this takes us into the 2 o'clock hour. So it really not much happened after 1 o'clock. 
It was really quiet after 2 o'clock. I mean, this is a quiet first day back after a holiday going into the December month when things start to slow down usually. The last couple of weeks, the volume will usually get really low. But one thing that happens during December is that a lot of the institutional traders and the banks, they're going to be squaring up a lot of their portfolios and a lot of their clients are going to be uh, moving stuff around, selling stuff, getting rid of stuff, uh, maybe selling things to get some Christmas money, things like that. So you will see some periods of vo volatility during December, but for the most part, it'll get slower and slower as we get into the end of the year. But just be aware that you will have some moments where you have big moves like this and this when if somebody calls in and says, hey, I want to dump all this, I, I need to close all, I, you know, I need to for tax reasons or whatever, by the end of the year, I need to square this up or I want to switch my portfolios around or they've got some bad trades that they want to switch around before they go into the new year. You'll see that. So just be aware of it. But at the same time, generally December starts to get slower and slower as we get into that last two weeks of the year when most, most of your uh, traders and bankers are going to take off. So anyway, uh, that's what I saw today. I'm not going to drag this one out. I uh, hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving, enjoyed the break. Uh, I took a break. I'm a little bit behind, so it's, it's going to take me a day or two to catch up. I got fairly well caught up today, but I'm still not quite there. It'll take me probably to tomorrow to get back on track and to get everything pretty much done that I need to get caught up on. So, But uh, I enjoyed the break, and it was nice to get away for a few days and to uh, think about something besides trading. So, But the good thing about those extended vacations, you come back, you're – you get, you know, you're rested, you're feeling good, you're excited about getting back to the markets again and doing some trading, and uh, you come back with a, uh, you know, renewed vigor, so to speak, and that's the way I am anyway. And as you do this longer and longer, you get to be where you look forward to those breaks, like me too, because I can't remember when I used to hate the holidays because I felt like, you know, I wanted to trade and I wanted to make money, and it made it hard and. But, you know, over time, when you do this long enough, you'll look forward to those breaks. You won't feel that way anymore. So, um, anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. We'll be back again to do it tomorrow. Uh, this is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.